Kia ora. Um, I'm here today to share about my philosophy being a RTV for blends. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to share about my philosophy and I'm quite a holistic person so you'll see that that, that kind of comes into my academia as well. So I've decided that I will use a uh, some pictures to do some of my talking and I'll just talk to them as I go through. Uh, hopefully this is going to be less than 15 minutes because I know that about 8 minutes is a thousand words so I'll try my best but I'm a bit of a talker. So look, let's start off with domain 1 and here is the basis for my philosophy which is the Modi, the potential of our students. Um, this is from 2011 SNA McFarlane and it's called Te Piki Nā Ki Runga, Understanding, Seeing Potential. So it's really important that for my inclusive philosophy that I see the whole child, I see the self-concept, the physiological, relational and the physical, how they're all relating together, how that works within the family. It's really important that I collaborate with the family, like find out as much as I can about their um, environment, maybe do an ecological assessment. Um, I want to see the big picture, how this child is relating to others, how they're relating at school, how they're relating at home. What are the things that they love? What are the things that they dislike? What does their name mean? Um, you know, what's their relationships to their brothers and sisters? What are their functional skills? What are their independent skills? It's also important that um, when I'm working with others, I, particularly with the classroom mainstream teacher, um, I've got to make sure that I'm role modelling that social model of impairment, um, that it's up to us to change the environment for the child based on the principles of universal design. Um, so I quite like to use that consultative collaborative model because it means I'm still, we're all equals, I'm collaborating, I'm problem solving, but I still, in some cases, am the expert and have the knowledge on uh, best ways to adapt a, a environment and um, curriculum for the child with, uh, with low vision. So now I'll move on to my philosophy around domain two. So this is grounded in uh, biological understanding of the vision and the brain, how that works together to develop understanding. Some of the people that I look to in this area are Gordon Dutton um, and also Roman Lansky. I'll explain that a little bit further in Domain 6. Um, and also some blends research that I was lucky enough to go to a working group in this area. Also in terms of functional vision, the people that I look to the most in terms of the academic world is Hall and Bailey because they have a differentiation between visual training and visual stimulation. So it has been shown that visual training um, a child will develop further as opposed to just being in a stimulated environment. And then also I quite like Korn's visual abilities, environmental cues and stored availability because this um, brings more complexity to the situation. It means that you know some one child was 624 could have better functional vision than another child with 624. So I want to be looking at all those characteristics and thinking, okay, how is this happening? Why is that student able to do that? And even in terms of glasses, um, you know, like the physics, the how the lens changes, and um, I just want to have a really good understanding of that so I can then therefore share that with teachers and, and share that with parents and children so that they know that my practice is based on scientific and, and a biological understanding. So now I'm moving on to domain three, which for me I love the sensory integration aspect, how that relates to motor, cognitive and developmental understanding. Um, it's really important that I have uh, good understanding in all that area, particularly in terms of working with the preschoolers at the Blends program. So 
Some of the books that I go to for this are The Sensory Curriculum by Flo Longhorn. She informs my practice quite a lot. And also uh, Sensory Integration, which was from the book by Bundy and Murray. And in terms of my caseload, I have a lot of children that I'm working with that hearing and tactile de- hearing, tactile and motor development are really key skills that um, help to enrich in the child's learning, particularly within that um, complex needs area and cerebral vision impairment combined. Um, I need to make sure that that their that their hands and their their auditory uh, processes are developing so that they can use those skills to then access the curriculum. Cool. So moving on to domain four, which is assessment. All of my programs start with a functional vision assessment and functional observation assessment. These are always done with a senior teacher as I'm still really new and I also just think it's good practice to do it with two people. So the current assessments that I use are vision vision specific and developed to support access so that I'm actually getting a true picture of what they're able to do or not do. So I use functional vision assessments, functional vision observation, um, I use a happiness audit, sensory profile, with the special skills and collaboration, I use the quest assessment. Um, I use the key competencies. Oh gosh, sorry. I use the key competencies when I'm doing my reporting, my kind of termly reports or my fortnightly reports. And these are based on using, sorry, the key competencies and also narrative assessment, which helps to see the whole picture of the child and see where the learning is happening, as opposed to the child being invisible with other types of assessment. Um, So it's also really important that you use a a media channel assessment so you can identify uh, what stream the child prefers to use and develop their program around that. Um, and then also the FELA curriculum, which is active learning and the Oregon, and depending uh, on the Oregon steps, sometimes I quite like to use the Carolina as well, and also the, um, I think it's the Journal of Baby, the Journal of Development. Yeah, so I will kind of use a combination of those depending on the student. Right, so in terms of domain five, this is adaptations. So it's really important that material, environmental, administrative and success criteria all have adaptions for students that are blind and low vision. This was found by Ferreira and Aburike in 2017. So that means that all those areas are adapted, which is actually quite a lot. To help me guide this, I go from the expanded core curriculum um, with an emphasis at the moment of my practice on social and adapted daily living. I I have a program running at a local school where I take two or three children with low vision and also other children from the classroom for uh, social skills development. And then within our region, um, I support a senior teacher with a program called Fun Friday, which is a termly thing where all the children in Canterbury with low vision are invited to adaptive daily living skills, where we do cooking and um, also social skills and also sports and other areas like building independence, so learning how to pack our bags, learning how to tie our shoelaces, these yeah, there's three groups running for different age groups, and this is how we, this is how I try and cover the expanded, some of the areas of the expanded core curriculum. Um, I guess another area in terms of those adaptive, um, adaptive programs is still the active learning by Lily Nielsen. She's really important because it's changing the environment and including specific. Um, equipment for children that have low vision and also even though Roman Lansky uses the phrase cortical vision I still 
I'm not thinking about it in terms of cortical vision, but I am using her program because she still does have quite a lot of examples in terms of the black background, the simplified imagery. Um, yeah, that's still helpful. Some of her frameworks are, you know, are still helpful for my program, particularly with the students with complex needs and cerebral vision impairment. Um, I haven't, yeah, I haven't really yet gotten to the point where. I can use Gordon's Dutton, Gordon Dutton's research as thoroughly as Roman Lansky's because hers is often to do with students with complex needs as well. But I'm really learning. I'm really looking forward to learning how I can use that research um, with this, with these, with these students as well. So uh, for my domain six. Um, from a working group that I was invited to, I was very, very fortunate to be invited to this and I think this will have a huge impact on my practice. It's so important to be working in a transdisciplinary team. Oh, sorry, I've forgotten to go down to, um, where is it? Sorry, I was on functional vision. Oh, right, okay, and I missed the main picture. So, also, yes, yeah, sorry, this was for domain five, is the expanded core curriculum and how I how I use that, so I kind of explain that. Um, and then the transdisciplinary team, Florian from Bartimaeus kept using the word interdisciplinary team. I think she kind of meant it in a similar vein though. So it's very important, particularly working with students with CVI and in terms of diagnosing that student um, and creating an education plan, you have to use a interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary team where education and health are working together and the communication and the, the same information is, is, is all knitted so that these students are getting diagnosed and we are creating good programs for them because that is an area that really needs so much research and work and yeah I was just really excited to be part of it. Um, so in terms of my philosophy, I use cerebral vision impairment when I'm talking about it and I refer to Gordon Dutton and I'm still currently using Roman Lancy in my practice as, um, yeah, as, as um, sorry, I think I just explained that before. Um, and also I still use Lily, I use Lily Nielsen. Uh, for this area of children with complex needs and additional learning needs. And I think as well in this area it's really, really important to see the positive and just always being positive with parents and giving hope and just providing that support that is needed. Um, so yeah, I've I've learned so much from this course and yeah I feel really grateful that I've been able to have this time to read and to think about how these concepts relate to my practice. Thanks.